A question that has been asked a lot recently is how YG Entertainment went from being one of the leading companies in the industry to having a tragic downfall. If you would have asked someone a few years ago who were the leaders of K-pop, your answer would be the big three companies, namely SM, JYP, and YG Entertainment. They made K-pop what it is today due to the new things they brought to the industry and their impact on the new generation of idols. However, things have changed recently, putting YG's position at risk. Hybe Labels has gotten even bigger, acquiring companies and debuting groups left and right, which has made people refer to the companies as the Big Four. YG has also had many missteps, whether because of how they manage their artists or their refusal to change, but it has greatly diminished the company's legacy. At first, YG did all the right things. Founded by Yang Hyun Suk, a member of So Taiji and The Boys, the company established itself with iconic artists such as Seven, Gummy, Wee Sung, and One Time. Later, it hit the global spotlight when Big Bang and 21 rose to fame, but that wasn't all. Yang Hyun Suk also noticed the potential in artists like Lee Hai and Akmu, promoting them as incredibly promising newcomers. On top of this, they brought on board the legendary first-generation group Sex Keys, expanded their presence in acting, and introduced more impressive rookie groups like Winner, Icon, and of course, Blackpink. They managed to expand their sub-labels as well, and received investments from top companies like LVMH and Naver. Based on this, it's no wonder why they gained the status that they had, but then they started acting like they were too good and exclusive for Korean shows, and that's when it all went downhill. One of the most common complaints that we we've heard from fans of YG groups is the infrequent comebacks. There's a pattern of rookie YG groups dropping music often and keeping a regular schedule when they're freshly debuted, but after a couple of years they tend to release songs less and eventually they either disband or the members head in different directions. Newer or casual K-pop fans usually take Blackpink as an example of this, but the company has always been doing it this way, especially after groups like Icon and Winner debuted. Fans assume that's because the company wants to create the idea that they're more exclusive than others in the industry. That's why when they put out something new, it grabs attention because they have a track record of hits. Their trick is playing on the idea that when things are rare or hard to find, we see them as more valuable. But that's not necessarily true as the music of their artists is pretty much always the same, and so there's not really anything that helps to differentiate between one comeback and another. The company has also argued that the reason that they have very few releases, it's because they're emphasizing quality over quantity. You can say that this was a thing of the past when songs released under YG were unique for every group and represent represented the identity of the group or the artist. Now, they all have the same formula, made by the same producers, and with the same samples, which is arguably crazy. Most of the artists that are part of YG groups are self-produced, and even if they weren't, we're pretty sure that the company has other producers working there rather than Teddy. Listening to their songs, you can clearly tell that they've used the same producers for a while and that they've been getting lazy these past few years, putting out similar songs. It would also be more than fine if some of the YG artists like Blackpink took a long time between releases if they were heavily involved in the production, but this doesn't apply to YG artists. If we're being honest, it looks like they're trying to follow the tactics of Western agencies, but in an industry where small agencies can release multiple albums a year, YG comes off as lazy. It seems like they want to focus more on creating hits rather than having the idols grow as artists, and this has heavily contributed to people losing their respect for the company as a whole. We can't deny that their refusal to change their tactics has caused them to lose their essence as an entertainment agency. Their approach of promoting their artists and making them popular worked early on, but using the same dated strategy now has proven to have the opposite effect. The K-pop industry has become even more fast-paced recently, with new groups debuting every day and older groups coming up with new and fresh releases multiple times a year. This has made it impossible for groups to stay relevant unless they consistently come up with good music and feed fans new content very frequently. So it's really surprising that a company that has been in the game as long as YG won't change how they function to fit the shifts in the industry and take advantage of them. Speaking of not changing things up, we also need to address the YG sound that the company keeps trying to push onto their new artists, more specifically Baby Monster. The group's debut song kept getting delayed, with the excuse that the company wanted to improve the quality of the track. Then Batter Up came out, and it sounded like a Blackpink demo that has been gathering dust in YG's basement since 2019. And now, YG's tactic of not promoting the group started even earlier, as immediately after their debut, the company announced that Baby Monster wouldn't be taking taking part in any music shows. So not only is the agency getting lazy in making sure that their groups would have their own identity and stand out, but they also don't want to show off their idols or their talent. Considering that with G-Dragon's departure and the Blackpink members not renewing their contracts, YG has very few artists to rely on. In these circumstances, you'd think that they'd make sure to promote Baby Monster properly, but they seem set on thinking that what they're doing is right, so they don't have to change anything. As an employee from the company said it best, the higher-ups make it difficult 
difficult to try new things or follow the market trends and that they have low incentives, especially compared to companies of their size and success. The amount of scandals have also led to YG losing their biggest artists and their once stellar reputation. The company and its founder have had more than their fair share of controversies, scandals of illegal substances and activities, Burning Sun and Yang Hyun Suk's own criminal behavior have tainted the company's history and reputation to no end. T.O.P. and G. Dragon's issues with substance use, accusations against 21's Park Bomb for smuggling amphetamine, B.I.'s similar controversy, and Yang Hyun Suk's involvement in it, along with his numerous legal troubles, have negatively affected the public's perception of the company. It doesn't compare to the ruckus that Burning Sun caused, but Yang Hyun Suk has had enough scandals already. He was investigated for gambling, evading taxes, soliciting escorts, forcing a witness to change their statement about B.I., and many more things. In fact, it was the latter as well as the other controversies that the company was faced with at the time that made him resign from his position at YG while that was only publicly as it was reported that he still runs the company in the background due to the fact that he owns the most shares. When Yang Hyun Suk resigned, so did his younger brother Yang Min Suk, making Huang Bo Kyung step into the CEO position. To some people, it seemed like there was a glass cliff situation going on when women get promoted to top positions in a company when things are tough, like in a crisis, recession, or when failure is more probable. This happens so the woman can take the brunt of the scandal while the guilty party can get away unscathed. However, the way that Huang Bo Kyung herself was accused of insider trading makes us think that the company in itself is prone to scandals and can't escape them no matter who's at the top of the chain. This may be why Yang Min Suk came back to his position three years later. When it comes to scandals of their artists, especially those in which they're innocent, they can't seem to know how to handle things. Park Bomb and now most recently, G Dragon had the company distance themselves from their artists, leaving them to deal with all the negativity and backlash. G Dragon's case was especially damning, seeing as the company could have taken a few hours out of their time to see if he was innocent and then proceed with the information. Instead, they said that they wouldn't comment on the situation since G-Dragon wasn't their artist anymore and that was it. This would have been a good response in other cases, but it's being said that G-Dragon was thinking of renewing the contract with them, but the way YG responded to his scandal made him change his mind. These mistakes are costing the company a lot. We're not even talking about their image, prestige, or position in the industry, but lots and lots of money. There have been many instances where the artists recorded songs and filmed the music video only for everything to be scrapped entirely. The unnecessary disbandments and loss of artists have affected their stocks too. Losing G-Dragon cost YG about $64 million in market cap value. The long discussion with Blackpink regarding their contracts had their shares plunging by 13.3%, and the news of Jenny opening her own label also made their stocks drop. Not to mention that in 2021, due to financial struggles and losses, the company's status shifted from being among the top blue chip firms to becoming a regular mid-sized business, losing Icon, Blackpink, and Big Bang all within a short time span, along with the disappointing performance of Baby Monster and their recent negative reputation might seem like a wake-up call for them to make changes, however, it appears that they're not taking that direction and don't plan to. It's just sad to see such an important company hit rock bottom, but what can we say except that they did it to themselves?